This is a video about style points in the Ubiquity role-playing system. This is an entry into an ever-growing playlist that seems to only grow occasionally. And for that, I'm sorry. But style. I've been speaking with Ivan, who runs the Ivan Mike 1968 YouTube channel about Ubiquity, as he's recently gotten into the game and uh, has been releasing videos about it. And we've been uh, chatting in Messenger uh, about his his thoughts and his discoveries and, and so on. It's, it's been great for me. I always enjoy a period where people are getting into a game that they like and, and spitballing ideas of what they might do with it. And one topic of conversation which has come around a few times is style. And this is a mechanic which can often be confused with a similar sounding mechanic in other games where there are are some games out there where you can spend an amount of points to change an, an outcome or you know, narrate a scene to your advantage. Style in its, its basic form is not that mechanic. And when I first looked at Ubiquity, I almost you know sighed and put it away because I saw hints of this mechanic, but then I read it and realized it was something else, something that I could really get behind. Style is a way to boost your die pools. Now, this doesn't guarantee that you'll have success in that endeavor, but it does start to take on after a while the sense of you, the player, and of course, the character, as you're narrating the use of style. Well, you really want this particular endeavor to succeed. Style almost in a way becomes that sense of exertion. And it's earned in much the same way that these points are earned in the games in which they exist by role playing and by contributing positively to the atmosphere of the game, however the group sees that. It doesn't have to be something prescriptive like you must speak in a dialect and come in costume and I shall award you style. It doesn't have to be like that. It could be for a well-timed pun or joke. It could be for using a dialect and coming in costume. Who knows? Obviously staying true to your archetype by role-playing your flaws both to the advantage of entertaining the group and to your disadvantage as a character. These are things that can earn your style. Are you the big game hunter? How are you portraying that? And when the group gets the sense that, you know, the big game hunters in the room, then we would expect style chips to be flowing. When you take those risks, when people are kind of gripping the edge of the table to see if you're going to get smeared into paste or if you're going to come out triumphant. These are when style points are being spent and being earned. It's a flow back and forth, an ebb and flow across the table of, of rewards, investments, risks, and style. At its core, style has this aspect or this, this foundation of collaborating, cooperating with, and contributing to the enjoyment of the group of the game you've chosen to play. It's both a reward and a currency. It's a way for you to show investment that this particular action, this punch, this swing across the gorge, this attempt to decipher these ancient hieroglyphs, this maybe risky or ridiculous attempt to defuse a ticking bomb, whatever it is, that you are sinking yourself, you are exerting yourself to achieve success and hoping that that success will happen, but you are not buying that success. Of course, the way that ubiquity works with needing to earn a certain number of successes in order to achieve a task, that with a large enough investment of style, you could buy a success. And therein lies the reason for this video. How much style? How much style? There are two sides to this question. There's the game master side and the player side. We'll look at the player side first, because ostensibly it's the simplest one to answer. 
But really for the players, how much style comes down to how much should I spend? And this is rooted in the sense of I don't want to be without it. I want to hoard it. I want to always have access to it. And much like Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade, this is a case where you need to have faith. And I'm not telling you you need to spend style on everything. That would, that would cheapen it in a way. But these points are there to be spent. They're there to be earned so that you can spend them. And it's a flow between you and the game master. So if you hoard them, then your character is never, ever reaching their potential. Style is an absolute part of what your character can do. This is why I keep describing it as representing your character exerting themselves. Right? Without style, this is just you know, the, the, the base involvement or investment of your character. When they start to care, when they start to worry, when they start to be afraid, when they start wanting to really smash that guy's face in, or when win the race, or you know, be the first person to find the clue in the library, or whatever it is, that's when style needs to be spent. And spend it. You don't have to blow it all on the roll and always be sitting there with zero style. You don't have to do that. But demonstrate. Use the spending of the style to give yourself both a reason and an impetus in narrating how your character feels, what your character is showing, what they're doing to make their, their presence known, to make their interest, their, their desires known. That's kind of interesting. Everybody around the table gets those physical clues. If they were present in a real life situation, they would be able to see the expression and see the sweat and see the, you know, or hear the, the grunts of exertion and, and whatnot as they're, you know, wielding a pickaxe to get out of the collapsed mine or paddle the boat to safety or escape the chasing Tyrannosaur or whatever it is. But we're not. We're sitting around a table or we're trying to communicate through the glass of computer screens and hangouts and whatnot. Spending the style is that signal that this is important and people perk up, they pay attention. And spending style is often rewarded by receiving style. So that's why things get complicated for the game master side of this question. Complicated, but fun. The game master has to decide the rewards. Right? The players are playing, they're having a good time, they're, they're portraying their characters, they're narrating their actions, they're getting involved, they're laughing. Everyone's having a good time, and so are you. You just need to learn, as the, the GM of a Ubiquity game, that when that is happening, that you're tossing style out to the people who are behind that particular flash of enjoyment. And when the chips are down when when players are investing themselves in action to assess, you know, how big a risk is this? And, you know, this, this character is really going in on this. And if they are successful, you know, when the description part of it comes around, when they describe what it was that they actually did, or when you have to describe what the outcomes are checking the reaction of the players around the table. How many style are you going to give out for that? How evocative of the character, of the scene, of the mood, of the group was that particular exchange? How much style are you going to give out? If they are unsuccessful, what was the response? How you know, plucky are they? How quickly do they get back up on their, their feet and try something else? How do they narrate the consequences? How do you narrate the consequences and what is what is the reaction to that description and how many style points are you going to give out? Style points must flow. It's almost like the spice in Dune. They must keep flowing so that the action can spread out through the galaxy that you are creating in whatever of the ubiquity games that you're playing. Style points must flow back to you and out from you. But how many? If a huge heaping pile of style is sitting in front of the players, then it's not really much of an investment. It's something that they can just use willy-nilly. And yet if too few, then they aren't living up to their potential as characters and they aren't 
uh, taking the risks, which are kind of the staple of the pulp genre, which is the staple of most of the ubiquity games. So it's a conundrum. How much style? One of the interesting things about how ubiquity, the ubiquity rules are written is that this aspect of style is spelled out in a way. You might want to play a very challenging game. And so the costs for what style can do go up. In the default setting, if you invest one style point, you can get one die added to your pool. If you invest two style points, you can boost a talent up to a higher level, and this will last for a whole scene. So if you have some kind of combat talent, you can push it up to a higher level. You can invest yourself in, and perform at a higher level in that combat, and it will last for the whole scene for two style, etc., etc. There are costs to things. Style can also be used to resist incoming damage. It's not that you are instantly healing, it's that because of who you are and the way that you are acting in the scene, that damage never happened. So you can see how the the ebb and flow of style, the spending, the physical act of returning style chips to the game master or receiving style chips from the game master is only a part of the equation. The actual descriptions that are flowing back and forth are really where the excitement lies. So you can dial this up or down. Style chips can have a greater effect if you want to have a more heroic kind of experience, or you can dial it down so that style chips have a much more limited, limited effect, or you can even try and run the game without and this will be very, very challenging for the players indeed, as the default is really how we should imagine uh, the standard conception of a ubiquity character, what they can and can't do. The system is sort of built around that default. You can make it much more over the top, or you can dial it down so it's much more terrifying and difficult. So again, how much style? Well, it depends on the setting that you've chosen. Now, I like players to usually be able to exert themselves in some way. So I'm less concerned as a, as a game master about them being able to mitigate incoming damage. That's a decision I feel that they need to make in their spending habits. I certainly don't want them to hoard style chips in order to never take damage. So how much style. I like talents to be able to be boosted. I like die pools to be able to expand. I like people to be able to toss in a style chip to, you know, kind of emulate taking the average. In Ubiquity, as we've talked about in earlier clips, sometimes you have uh, an odd numbered die pool. Maybe you have three dice or five dice or seven dice, and you can take the average on the even amount and roll one die to see if you succeed or not. Or you could toss in a style chip and make the pool even, take the average and move on because you are who you are in that scene. This is your bread and butter and you describe that and the, the character comes off seeming pretty cool and the player can take pride in being able to you know, move through that scene without breaking much of a sweat. So, how much style? It was hard for me at first. I didn't have the rhythm of when style came in, returning it. So I, I had this separated in my head. Players would spend style to achieve effects that they wanted, and I would spend style to reward things that had happened. But these things weren't connected, and I feel that they need to be. So somebody puts four style chips in to expand their pool because they absolutely have to catch this villain and they describe the chase and they you know, desperately reaching out with their hands and you know snatching their cloak and pulling them to the ground in, in all for one for example and we all go yeah and you got them and we're all excited and that deserves style right and that was the secret for me how much style I don't have to give back everything that came in, but it does need to be this ebb and flow. When someone makes me laugh, I will toss out a style chip. When someone does something 
perfectly cool that that really gives me an image of their character i'll give out two style maybe three if everything stopped around the table and we all laughed and enjoyed it how much style keep them flowing in both directions if the players aren't spending them encourage them to and show that there's no risk of being without by rewarding them with some in return if they do something cool when the group is working like the group wants to work reward that with style when threats pile up receive the style and encourage the description that makes you want to reward style and i feel your game will go smoothly to put this all finally in some kind of concrete context I find during my games that players have somewhere between two and six style in front of them. And then once things start to heat up, that uh, this will drop down to zero and then quickly go back up to one or two or three. And then, you know, back down to zero and then up to four or five or six and then back down. And, and it will go through the course of the session, through the course of a scene. It will go up and down. And that's exactly what you want. All right. Now, where does style come from? Style comes from all of these things that we've described and also during character generation when the player chooses specific archetype and, and you know, sense of who their character is and then assigns them flaws and giving into those flaws, making those flaws real in the scene is a source of style. This is the player giving the signal to the game master saying, I'm willing to take this liability and every time I bring it out in play, Let's enjoy it rather than beating me to death with it. And it's a way to earn style. You want the characters role-playing their characters. Make sure that the flaws match up with who their character is and is a flaw that will be entertaining for the player, will be evocative of your setting. Not something that they hate, that they wish they hadn't taken. Not something that the other characters or other players can't stand. Maybe it should be something that the, their characters can't stand, but that the players can't stand. Think about characters from movies, such as from Indiana Jones, for example. What are Indy's flaws? What are his father's flaws? What about Marcus? Right. Sulla. We enjoy their strengths and their weaknesses. And these are the secrets, the flaws that you need to take for your characters. And so that bringing them out in the tape at the table during play is worthy of earning style. It does take a little bit of practice to get everything flowing smoothly and matching exactly how much style for the particular game and the particular people that you're playing with. But I feel that these principles have proven to be consistent in the different ubiquity games that I've run, and I'm willing to bet they might uh, be of some use around your table as well. Are you a long-term ubiquity player? Share your thoughts. If you're just getting into it, likewise, share your thoughts. Let's talk about style.